Hi everybody, my name is Shannon Estep. I am a teaching professor and instructional technology coordinator at Northern Kentucky University. Today we're going to be talking about how you might be able to use AI as icebreakers in your classroom. Now so often we use icebreakers at the beginning of a semester, beginning of a class to really build community and help students to feel comfortable. But this will take a little bit of a twist and include AI in those icebreaker activities. So let's take a look. Okay, so you can see I'm showing us a presentation here. I will link this in the description box below. I also want to give a shout out to Deanna Faraday from Clover Park Technical College, where the inspiration from this came from at a conference I attended. Um, so let's take a look. Again, we are talking about icebreakers that could be used with AI to start off your classroom or your semester. So I have several here for us to take a look at. So let's look at the first one. So this one is a twist on the two truths and a lie that I'm calling two truths and AI. So I did this this semester in my classes and here's how it works. I gave students an index card and I asked them to write their name on one side and two truths about themselves on the other. Now I did tell them don't necessarily list the two truths first, otherwise it'll be obvious that the very last one on the card is the lie. So I gave them that um, that tip before we started. So once they had their two truths, then the students asked ChatGPT to give them a lie to use for the game. Now, a couple notes here. You could use any LLM that you want. I chose ChatGPT because it doesn't require a logon. This was class number one. We hadn't really gotten into much about what AI is, so I thought this would be an easier way to go. Um, the other thing I did tell them was to tell ChatGPT that we were playing a game so that it would understand it was okay to give a lie. Generally speaking, AI does not like to lie. So um, I told them to give it kind of the, um, the precursor of, yes, it is a game that we are playing. Okay, once they were done with that, I collected the cards and then I got students, or they rather, really put themselves into groups of two to three. And once they were in their groups, I gave them that many cards to take a look at. The groups decided together, the people in the group decided which one they thought was the lie. And then they went back to ChatGPT and asked it for, here are the three things I've got. Which one do you think is a lie? And then they had to ask AI for the reasoning behind why they chose that one. So then we went around the room and we said, okay, what is the card that you have? They would read all three statements and they would say collectively as humans, we decided that this one was the lie. And then they would say, and this is what AI thought was the lie. Um, and then they would name, of course, name the person so that we would know who we were um, learning about. Sometimes the what the humans thought and what the AI thought were the same. Often it was not. And then after they read all three and gave us their assessment on which one was the lie and what AI's assessment was, the person whose card it was would tell us the truth. And so in the process of all of this, we got to know the person, but also got to understand a little bit about where um, AI was coming from and its reasoning and, and why the humans thought it was what it was. I will say sometimes AI was correct and the humans were wrong, and sometimes the humans were correct and the AI was wrong, and sometimes they were both right or both wrong. It really was all over the board. I will tell you, this sounds so simple, and it really is. The students loved it. It was a really great way to start the class. There was a lot of laughing. There was a lot of um, just interesting conversation and learning about each other and a little bit of AI in there so that they could get their feet wet just a bit. I will say I was surprised at how well this worked. So the next one. This one's called AI Bingo. Students work in groups to use AI to complete and cover squares. So I have two different variations here that I um, had ready for my class. One a bit longer, one a bit shorter. You could give prizes for things like this, um, extra credit or candy or really anything you wanted. Um, these, you can read the squares there are, are kind of generic. My class is an instructional technology class, um, but if you had a specific topic you wanted to start to tiptoe into a little bit, history or science or math, you could of course customize these to be specific to your content area. I did have AI help me with some of these squares to give me good things that would work well in a bingo type environment. You could use the LLM of your choice here. I think I even have 
um, I designate in some of these squares. Use Gemini for this, use ChatGPT for this, or you could leave it totally open for them. So the first uh, team to score bingo gets a prize if you choose to do that. And then you could also do a cover the bingo, um, all the squares, if you wanted to make it a little bit longer. So AI bingo is another option that you could use in class as a icebreaker to start off a lesson or the semester. So the next one here is uh, genuine or, genu or, or generated. So um, students work in groups of three or four. There's a quote or an AI image on the screen. Groups decide whether this is real or fake. One member of the group moves to a designated spot for real um, or fake. So you might have two different spots in the room. If you think it's real, somebody from your group step over here. If you think it's fake, step over to this side um, and see who wins. First team to five wins. Again, this could be a quote or an AI image that you have up there on the screen. So we might be asking the question, um, which one of these is real? Uh, so you can either have designated space in the room where you say A or B, or you might say, um, let's talk about image A. Do we think this is real or fake? And again, there's a lot of different ways you can do this. I've done it just like this. Um, I used Poll Everywhere, and it was to begin our session on AI actually and I asked okay A or B which one of these two do you think is AI generated and then they would um, cast their vote and but again you could you could um, mix this up in any way you want I think group work is kind of fun when you're getting to know each other and they can kind of debate amongst themselves in the group um, and then decide everybody who thinks A is AI generated come to this part of the the room, everybody who thinks B is AI generated um, to this to this side of the room and, and giving them the understanding that one of these is real and one of these is fake. So uh, now that we've looked at this for a few, a few seconds here, um, which one of these do you think is AI generated? All right, the answer in this case is B is AI generated. And usually this one gets them. Um, they usually don't get this one right. Or I'll usually ask them, how confident do you feel about your answer? And they're a little wishy-washy on that. <laughs> um, so this is uh, just an easy way to kind of start a conversation about AI. Um, really how hard it is to tell sometimes what, which images are real and which ones are AI generated. And that kind of gets in, into a little bit of conversation about to critically think about images or quotes uh, or content that you are seeing online. Is this real or, or could this have been generated by AI? So we tiptoe a little bit into um, some AI literacy and how to critically look at things online. Um, again, I'm going to put this uh, presentation in the description box. This more examples takes you to a presentation, uh, a Google slide presentation where I've been collecting these images and and putting in the speaker notes which one is AI and which one is real. Um, if you wanted to use something like that in your classroom, I just ask that you give attribution back to me. Um, but I've been collecting these from a newsletter I read weekly where they have kind of a trivia on this each week and it's called The Neuron. I'd highly recommend it. It's a great AI newsletter if you want to stay current. Okay, so this was another one. Let's go to our last one here, which is AI Illustrate Me. This is a neat way to have students uh, use AI to create something that represents themselves. This works particularly well in an online class, but you could do it in class as well. Um, I have a couple different thoughts here, ideas on what you could do to help students to generate images that represent them. Um, the first bullet talks about providing a template prompt to create a personalized superhero as a way to introduce themselves. You can see my example there of me as a superhero in the lower right hand corner. Um, for this example, I helped a faculty member to generate a prompt like this where they were creating a superhero and they had to um, describe what they'd be wearing and what their background was and what they'd be holding, which were supposed to represent something about them. Um, it, it, it's a fun way to create a, a likeness of you that represents something about you. 
Uh, the other prompt there is to create a combination of animal, food, hobby, location, and color that would represent your favorite things in each of those categories. And this would, again, allow some creativity. It's also something I would strongly encourage you to encourage them to cite it. So this gets a little bit into, again, a bit more AI responsible use. And um, that citation could be anything as simple as, you know, a note um, at the bottom that says this was AI generated using, and then the name of the tool that they used. Um, or it could link literally back to the tool that they created. A lot of these tools allow for that. I have a few image creator um, suggestions here, things that I think have worked well um, to create images and would work well with students. Um, I did practice each of, well, the top one and then the second one was kind of a late ad with an assignment I had my students do and they had fun creating um, themselves as superheroes um, or with a combination of animal food and et cetera. Um, one student actually created a superhero um, of her kids and she was going to use it for um, birthday invitation so something fun that kind of sparked out of this exercise so these are image creators again that um, i think would work well for this probably uh, my favorite one on the list is probably ideogram i think it does a really good job of um, creating realistic looking images that would work well for this uh, particular exercise so those are a few icebreakers that might work well in your classroom. Um, I wanted to just give my contact information if you would like to reach out or have questions about the presentation itself. Um, I am happy to try to support and help in any way that I can. But this whole presentation is really just about, again, tipping, stepping your toes and theirs into what AI can do, and it really does foster um, not only community among students, um, but also a conversation, a start the start of conversations about what AI is, the things we need to be mindful of, the ways it might be helpful, citing it, and how to be ethical and responsible with a critical eye when we are talking about AI. So I hope you found this helpful, um, and I bid you good luck in incorporating AI potentially into your classroom and icebreakers.